even though that you have sinned, yes, God will be merciful to you and will understand your reasons. And there is a reason for everything. Th that's not what the Bible says there, brother. The Bible doesn't say that. So the second coming of Christ, what does he do to the people who don't believe in Christ? Okay. He will totally annihilate them, kill them and destroy the them. Current day Christians worship in Christ. In one sense, I feel a bit grieved because had they focused a bit more on the text over sure. tradition, they may see that difference and come to the same realization that we have, that worship must be an absolutely only for God alone. And whatever he commands us to pray and how to worship him, that's the best way. This, 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 what you've said about being on a desert island, not being with anybody, you would come to the same conclusion that all of the prophets came to, which is God is one alone. Uh, brother Ijaz, brother is Christian. Oh. Mashallah, um, you know, I just spoke to him about our concepts within uh, Islam about Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Is there maybe anything else you can maybe give the brother information that would help the brother? Well, I maybe have a question if that's okay. Absolutely. Well, why do you consider yourself a Christian, if you don't mind me asking? Um, it comes naturally for a cultural background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's the first point. Yeah. Secondly, I truly believe the message that is brought by Christ via the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, but basically this is it. Naturally, there are other messages from uh, well-recognized prophets yeah. within the Bible um, that that are there are true. There are many truths in this world, and that's why. That's what I believe in. There are many truths in this world. Um, at this point of my life, naturally, uh, I believe in the message of Christ, the message of love, which is, after all, the the, 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 the silver lining of every religion. Mm. I suppose. And I think that is very clear. Uh, that is a very clear message that comes from the Bible. I acknowledge the thing that you were just mentioning yeah, yeah. about kind of a. Uh, I wouldn't say obligation, but the message that is brought to say that you should worship one God. Yes. I understand why, but myself, at least, and that's also a message that is brought by Christ, is that you should question that. And at the end, he answers to that same question, you know, so every, all the message around the Bible is, um, for me, it's, it's true. So you find it beautiful as well and inspiring. You, you find it like it uh, teaches you to be a good person. Yeah. See, the reason I asked is Jesus in the four Gospels. I read him, he comes as a teacher. He's meant to be the good teacher. And what confuses me as a Muslim is when I look at a religious figure as a teacher, I like to see what they teach most importantly. So if I were to compare, for example, modern Christianity with what Christ teaches, I find a disjuncture at some point. I'll give an example, for instance. When Christ teaches about the nature of God, how does he think or conceive of this God? Does he conceive of this God as uh, something which is eternal, something which changes over time, something with flaws? Does he direct the disciples and the people around him to worship him or to worship the Father alone? What does he do in those four Gospels, explicitly and clearly, that you think matches up today with modern Christian beliefs about Christ Jesus? Uh, uh, let me do a step back. Okay. I understand that you were not here at the beginning, so my initial disclaimer was that I'm not like an expert. He's in not like very, but religions. he just, he, 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 he's, uh, I suppose, culturally, and the Portuguese are very uh, Christian anyway, yes, culturally. Yes. They're very, they have their cultural roots. Yes. But also, the, the good teachings of kindness and of, of this sort of things are very alluring, aren't they? But in yes. any case, uh, I don't feel prepared to answer that because I wouldn't have questions yeah, or yeah, proper yeah. questions at the same level for yeah. you, technical questions. That would allow us to have a fair meaningful discussion, deep discussion and yeah, meaningful yeah. discussion that yeah. would but take us to. It is to, something to though that I would tend to reflect on because for my life as a Muslim, like the way that I pray, when I pray, how I pray, the words that I use, this is reflected in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. 
it's not something that we had to develop over time for us at least. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at Christ in the New Testament, I try to see specifically in the Gospels, which are meant to be about his life, how he led that life and what he taught. But I, I'll just give, well, like, I would also say that actually it's the reflection not on just Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but Jesus didn't eat pork. We, we don't eat pork. No, not true. Je I mean, Jesus was Jew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, what I, but what I'm saying is so. that he didn't. He, he forbade pork. Yes, he would pray, as I said to you, with his face onto the ground. It shows in the Garden of Gethsemane, as did Moses. So we're actually following all of the prophets, in fact, in their core teachings as well. In that sense, sorry, in that yeah, sense, yeah. Even about like the teaching of who <coughs> God is, there is a specific word. Uh, you can look it up later in the Greek New Testament that is used to refer to exclusive worship to God alone. And this term within the four Gospels is only used for God the Father. It's never once used for Christ Jesus himself. So when I see current day Christians worshiping Christ, in one sense I feel a bit grieved because had they focused a bit more on the text over sure. tradition, they may see that difference and come to the same realization that we have that worship must be an absolutely only for God alone and whatever he commands us to pray and how to worship him that's the best way would, would you agree with that maybe yeah I, I mean again let me do a step back and avoid yes. the question because I'm not a theosophist and it's hard for me to elaborate on underlying concepts yeah. such as I think what, what it is, brother, is, is perhaps yeah, just, uh, I, 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 I respect what you're saying. Maybe just uh, take what he said. Absolutely. And, you know, absolutely. maybe just do your own investigation, find out. And uh, you, do you live in UK or are you actually living in Portugal? I live in Portugal. Oh, you lucky yeah. man. <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky man. It's not uh, a cold. Uh, 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 yeah, well, said after my wife spent seven, eight, well, ten years here, she said, the Portuguese, we always like to complain. You know, we do. but she said that, you know, they don't realize how lucky they are. But then we are coming back. <laughs> yeah. They the don't end. realize how, because, you know, uh, the tomatoes, the fruits, the food, the, everything tastes everything so much tastes nicer. Different. Yeah, yeah, it tastes so nice. Told, it's so nice in Portugal, right? Because when you pick the fruit, it's proper ripe. Yeah, it has to be eaten within one or two days. Yeah. Here, they pick it maybe one week, 10 days. You have to leave it to just get it ripe. Yeah, it doesn't taste the same. Yeah. So my wife's like, my wife says everything here tastes like cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, everything tastes the same. I, I had it's an apple today and it was kind of good. Yeah. Not, not <laughs> so, you, you know, so you're very, you know, and one of the things... What's your name? One of the things that I would say, what's your name? Alphonse. Alphonse. You're from Portugal well, as well. Uh, so, I get a question. One of the things I say to people is that... Uh, 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 no, uh, when you, when you, I mean, when you, when I intervened in the conversation, which was very fruitful. Yes, I'm from Because my question was, wouldn't it be because... Again, on, in the Western society, and I'm not questioning oh, but how politics. it is decadent, yes. because ah. we all know that we live in a Western society that is becoming, on a daily basis, more decadent, lacking of principles, a lot yeah, of things that are pretty obvious, right that yes. it's not even arguable. Yeah. It may be driven by the fact that we lost the, the relation to the religious principle at yes. certain moments, definitely but again it might also be questionable but i think i truly believe as well that each person has its own way of believing in a religion in a religion you know and even though i call myself a christian or even though you call yourself a muslim you might have two different inter interpretations of what is written in the holy document it may happen but like the bottom line the silver lining of everything that is written there will is what makes us being here discussing these ideas which is fairness being kind to each other yes and that is definitely something that is lacking in politics so again yeah. based on the principle that we are here discussing these ideas i truly believe again that we do not necessarily have to have an overlap between what is uh, religion and politics because it can in practice be separated and still we may live in a fair world and a fair country. This is one of the things uh, I used to ask myself when I was younger as well. But something I quickly realized is when you have secular societies, it necessarily leads to hedonism, uh, the loving of pleasure and the seeking of it. Because religion restricts us. If you think about it, our Islam tells us don't eat for an entire during the day, 
for one month. Mm -hmm. It tells us not to eat certain foods like pork and And it has alcohol. very practical reasons why, like biological reasons not to do that. I mean, But the spiritual reasons matter here as well. Religion asks us to restrict ourselves when realistically we don't always have to. And that's the beauty of faith. It brings you closer to God, not by making you indulge more, but in restricting yourself from the world and what ties you to it. But well, also, you know, brother, you said something really very, real. very important about, you know, the, the silver lining being goodness, uh, you know, and respect and, and you know, uh, working together and what have you. However, I would say that the gold lining or the platinum lining <laughs> or the diamond lining, yes, is that we recognize the creator and we worship the creator how he wants us to worship him. That's a process. That's I understand. That's a very personal what process. I'm, I understand. But what I'm All the prophets had its own personal moments of truly believing in God and understanding what God is. I understand. But the basic concepts of what God is and what God isn't did not change. Yes. So God is one. God is absolute. God is without partners. God does not share his dominion and his majesty with any of his creation. And that we submit completely to the creator. This was the unified message of all of the prophets. I believe even of Jesus, peace be upon him, because we don't believe Jesus actually told the people to worship him. So what I'm trying to say to you is that you're absolutely right. The goodness that we show one another is very important. In fact, on the day of judgment, we're told the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said to the people who is bankrupt and the people said the person with no dinar with no money he's bankrupt he said there will be some amongst you on the day of judgment who will have mountains of good deeds but because your personal dealings with one another will be bad you'll be treating people badly or you'll be unjust to people the people will come and they will take from your good deeds the compensation until you will be left with nothing and then the people will still come and they will have the opportunity to offload their sins onto you as compensation for all the bad things that you did that is the definition of somebody who is bankrupt now so your idea of being good to one another is very important in Islam as well Because if you're bad to people, you steal from them or you're unjust or you lie. On the day of judgment, you could become bankrupt. So it's very important. But the ultimate, ultimate goodness is if Allah says that I am one, do not associate partners with me. And then you or I or he associates partners with God. Then are we truly good? Have we truly achieved the pinnacle of goodness? I would say no. I would say that we've neglected the most fundamental, most important message that all of the prophets gave. What was the commandment of Musa salam, Moses to his people? To worship God Hear, O oh Israel, know that your Lord, your God is one God. Ehad, Ehad, one God. Yes? Uh, Jesus himself in the Bible, He does the miracles, but immediately he says, I do it with the finger of God, with the power of God. Mm -hmm. You know, he, I give life to the dead with the power of God. I cast out the demons with the finger of God. He always attributed the power to the creator. So all I would say to you, my brothers, is this. Just research for yourself. Who were the early Christians, Ebionites, who believed in Jesus as a prophet? who were killed by other Christians because they did not accept that. Study for yourself the ecumenical councils over seven centuries, just to talk about the nature of Jesus, whether he's fully God, fully man, half God, half man, 100% God, seven centuries, eight centuries. And ask the question, why would Jesus leave things so ambiguous that people have to discuss for six or seven centuries about his very nature? <laughs> Okay, because if he is God, it's very easy for him to just make it clear. He will be the best communicator. But it, right? isn't it good to, to discuss about the mere existence? Because it makes you reflect and makes you 
be its conclusions. Please, brother, right? if I have to enter into a long discussion with you, I mean, of whether you, are you. whether you are human being or not, I would yeah. say this is ridiculous, right? No, of course. But, but if I had to have a discussion with you about whether you like toffees, or you like, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, but, uh, marshmallows, this could be a discussion we can have. We can have it maybe for a few hours even, maybe, right? But the very nature of who you are, a human being, if you said to me that it took six centuries to discuss this, I would say, no, this is a problem. Because it's the fundamental essence of what you are. And we believe that Allah is not a God of confusion. Mm -hmm. He would not leave the people confused. Absolutely. And that is notorious in practice, in practical. As you can see, like, there is a huge community, uh, the Islam community. Yes. The, the, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure really about the numbers. 1.6, 1.8, some say 2 billion. Uh, so nearly it should be to, very close to Christianity. To very close. About yeah. Nearly, I thought that it was even higher. No, no. At the moment, it's going to be. It will be in the in <laughs> 50 years time. They it predict. It could be today. We can add two people today. <laughs> <laughs> we had two people. Two more. But, but all I'm saying to you is, don't believe us because just what we are telling you. Do your own research. This brother, mashallah, he used to go to Christian school in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Yep. Uh, he studied the Bible, I think before you even studied the Quran. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Right? And what we're not coming from uh, hostility. We're saying to our brothers and our sisters, look, go back to the message of Adam, of Noah, of Abraham, of Jesus, mm -hmm. and of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is to just worship God alone. Do not make partners with God. And if you study for yourself early Christianity, and the turmoil, the discussions, the problems they had about the divinity of Christ. Because even the divinity of the Holy Ghost, how, when did this actually come in? Uh, second century. Second century. There we go. So Jesus never said, I am God, the Holy Ghost is God, and God is God. It took two centuries for people to come up with this idea. So you're clever people, mashallah. You know, ask yourself the question that if Jesus was God and the Holy Ghost was God and God was God, why was this not made clear? What it appears, if you investigate, is that the doctrine was the thing that guided the construction of the Bible, and it was not the Bible that made the doctrine. And this is very problematic. I would say this is like putting the horse or the cart before, before the, the horse. And it should be the horse that leads the cart. In other words, it's, it's the word of God that tells you what you should believe. It's not what you believe that you then make the word of God. That's the problem, you see. I guess that it also relates to the path that you take to understand yourself and to understand others. Uh, Sorry, what was that? Sorry, I didn't catch. Sorry, uh, no, it also teachers, relates to your Your, your voice your is very gentle, notes. it's very uh, nice. But <laughs> 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 You're like one of our friends here who comes as well, Dr. Imran, one yeah. of the EF Dawa. He's very, very gentle. I have to really get close to just no, him. sorry, sorry. It's also because I'm, I'm <laughs> getting cold. Really, really cold. Yeah. Because you're Portuguese, you don't realize yeah. this is, you know, this is our weather here. <laughs> I was yeah. not yeah. expecting gonna get a hat, it's gonna get cold for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> when, how long are you snow. staying here for? Uh, I, I would stay here for one week. One week, one week. and then back to Lisbon. And Lisbon must be at least, what, 15 degrees at the moment still? 15, 10, 16? 15. 15 maybe during the day. Bad, well, the, sun, di sun. the difference is they get sun there. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> so, so, so it makes a big difference. You know, even when it's cold, you if you're like if you don't have to wear all this, just wear like a jacket like this. It's fine. You still feel very comfortable. Well, depends. If you are Portuguese, you won't feel comfortable. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you're <laughs> you come from, no, no. If you're you Portuguese, you're complaining. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, if you're Portuguese, you're you complaining. Complain. But if we go from here, we're like, wow, amazing. <laughs> I, I need to tell you, I had. Two, two day jet lag when I arrived because yeah. the sun set at 4 p.m. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like. There is still 5 30 like, about, right? 5 30? 6 p.m. Yes, it's, a, it's very cool. 5 Did you get some good sleep? Were you guys rested and well? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's good. We had a bit of jet lag uh, from a recent. You know, your well. features is because in Portugal, obviously, you had uh, Andalus, you had Spain and Portugal, you had a lot of Arabian Muslim, influence. Oh, yeah. Muslim influence. influence. Yes. So the northern Portuguese. Their features are slightly different from the southern, southern Portuguese. Portuguese. Yeah, it's, you, know, you have a little bit of a Middle Eastern uh, yes. flavor to your. To, to your the, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were Muslim when you approached them, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. In, 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 in Portugal, you will meet a lot of people who are. They have very nice Middle Eastern and European mixed, mixed features, yeah. 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 
and my father has uh, red beard. So ah. he's like me, but ah. sometimes when he grows the beard, he gets maybe red beard. maybe your ancestors may may have well been Muslims. Ah, I maybe. I believe maybe. so. Maybe. I believe it's possible. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. possible. So we're just calling you back to your original <laughs> roots. <laughs> we're just calling you back to where you were, I mean, mashallah. May I ask you a question? question? Yeah, yeah, please, please. What's your name again? Joao. 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 It's like Juan Joao. Okay. in Joao. Spanish, Joao. but Joao. 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 Please. Yeah. Um, so. If I lived in the forest, yes, and I didn't ever like read any book. Yes, about yes, 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 yes. What would uh, be my spirit? Very good, very good question. No, yeah. uh, what kind of God would I? Be? You know, that's a if very I good question. Any, any book. I understand. What could I feel? It does. So this is a topic covered in natural theology, where you don't need a scripture, you don't need another person. But you simply observe the world around you, and you can absolutely deduce that a God exists, and He's only one. I'll give a simple example of this. We know that a God must exist, or another power must exist, because we are temporary. Everything must go back in time until something brought it into existence. The question becomes: Does it have to be more than one God, or can there only be one? Well, when we observe the world around us. Do you exist in one moment as if you have three hands and in the next as if you have two or is it consistent? Consistent. But if you had more than one God with the same authority and the same power, one would wish you to be one way and the other would change you. You would not have a consistent exactly. life experience. There has to be one uh, authority, one authority, sovereign. Like, yes, one sovereign. So, so you can only have one all powerful. Yes. Of course. Because if you have two all powerful, they conflict. They, they, Allah says in the Quran that they would outstrip one another. They would effectively overrule one another. Yes. You see? Yeah, there, there has to be an higher being, yes. which is uh, one. So when we ponder about it, without a scripture, we can still come to that fundamental yes. conclusion that there is absolutely one God. And the key to this, just to be clear, is. We can truly only know ourselves once we understand who the Creator is. Because when we put our place, we identify where we are with who we are from distinguishing ourselves between us and the Creator. We know the rights and obligations, the kind of life that we have to live. Otherwise, we become gods ourselves, in quotation marks, and we try to create an ethical system, a governmental system, something to manage our affairs. But for us as humans, if we know who God is, He's planned it see, out already. This, 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 what you've said about being on a desert island, not being with anybody, you would come to the same conclusion that all of the prophets came to, which is God is one alone. And this is what we're trying to explain to you, even our Christian friends. You will never come up with the concept that God is three. That God is three, mm -hmm. Son, the Ghost, and, and, and God Almighty. You won't come up with it. This is something that man has introduced. We believe in Islam, Allah says, when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, everybody is born on their fitrah. Allah places something in your heart to recognize God by. So this concept of you believing in one supreme being is something that is programmed, right. hardwired in you. Every, every single human being. Every single human being. That's why my brother, you know when a plane is crashing, even the atheist, <laughs> yeah, even yes, the atheist, yeah, sure. at the, when the death is close, he says, God, God, if you're out there, save me. But guess what? He will only focus on one God at that time. Not yeah. two, not, no, no, not no, two, not three, not five. Why? Because this is his innate predisposition, his fitra. What we believe is that this world and the pleasures of this world, the women, the food, uh, the traveling, the clothes, all of these material things, they cloud our fitra. So we, are, we become uh, mesmerized, hypnotized, uh, by the dunya, that the world and its treasures. But Allah says something very interesting in the Quran. Allah says that you race one another for this material, for the gold of this world, for the, for the wealth of this world, but you will soon come to know when you visit the grave. And then Allah repeats the same verse again. You will soon come to know when you visit the grave. In other words, that is when your fitra is completely unclouded. Yes, you, can, you cannot take anything. Now the world and its treasures are meaningless to you. 
and now immediately the realization of who you are and who God is becomes completely evident. The problem is, of course, may Allah forgive all of us and, and protect us, that if you haven't believed and haven't worshipped Allah by then, it's too late. Because now the unseen has become the seen. But that, that's a message that is interesting because yes. uh, that's a message that is contrary to the Bible, which yes. says that even though that you have sinned, yes. God will be merciful to you and will understand your reasons. And there is a reason for everything. Th that's not what the Bible says there, brother. The Bible doesn't say that. So the second coming of Christ, what does he do to the people who don't believe in Christ? Okay. He will totally annihilate them, kill them and destroy the them. First they will become his footstool. He will crush them. From it's in the New Testament. That's in you? Yeah, as I said, I'm not yeah. One other thing I want you brothers just to think about, yeah? When Christ comes again in his second coming, what does he say to people who say, we believed in you, we worshipped you, we did miracles in your name, We cured the sick in your name. What does he say to those people? Go away from me. I did not know you. Go away from me. I did not know you. And then he says something very interesting. He says, you people of lawlessness. You didn't adhere to the laws. What are the laws? The laws that he abided by. Pork, circumcision, worshipping of the father alone. All of these were his laws. So is, what, what's, the, what's the verse so they can reference it? It's Matthew chapter 7. It's about the uh, second coming of Christ. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, yeah? So what I want you to do, brothers, is just think about that. That here we have Jesus in the Bible saying to people that we did, we did miracles in your name. We believed in you as God. And he says to them, get away from me. I don't know you. I did not know you. And then he says what well, he qualifies why he's so angry with them. He says, you people of lawlessness, you, for, you, for, you forgave the law, you, uh, uh, gave it up. Yeah, you gave up the law. And in Islam, for us, we are not permitted to, to give up the laws when it comes to not having sex before marriage or uh, not eating pork or ham or drinking alcohol. Um, these, we have to adhere to the laws. But the interesting thing in Islam, is that you do not attain paradise by your works. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked by his wife Aisha that he said that everybody goes to paradise with the mercy of Allah. The mercy has to overshower them. Allah has to forgive them and then they enter paradise. So she said, even you, O Prophet Muhammad he said, even me, I will only enter paradise with the mercy of Allah. In other words, we can never earn paradise with our works, but the works are an indication of our devotion and our belief in the Creator. Because, you know, for example, if you want to study for an exam, if that exam is meaningful, you want to become an accountant or a pilot or a whatever, a surgeon, If that goal is meaningful, you're going to really study dedicate towards it, dedicate yourself towards it because you believe in that, right? So one of the things about believing in Allah, believing in the Quran, believing in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that the manifestation of that is that we have to have good behavior. We have to be honest. We have to be just. We have to pray. Uh, even a smile is charity. Uh, this is all form of worship for us. So it manifested, but we don't attain paradise because of our works. Because Allah says on the day of judgment, he will put all of your good deeds on one side of the scale and he will just place your eyes on the other side of the scale. And the eyes will be heavier than all the good that you've ever done in your life. So you can never pay God back for what he's given you. So we'll give you inshallah free Quran. Just think about it. Investigate what we've said to you about the Christianity. Look at the message of all of the prophets, make up your own mind. But you know, you asked a very good question. If I'm on a desert island, what is my concept of the creator? Brother, sorry, the camera there. What is my concept of the creator? Your concept of the creator is the same as the Muslim concept of the creator. Your concept of the creator will be the same as Ibrahim salam, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Moses, and Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And that shows that that fitrah 
is alive and kicking and it's working and it's doing its job, which is to recognize the creator. And you will not make partners with the creator. This is not something intrinsic to your psyche, your psychology, your psychology or your, or your belief, in, in, innate belief. This is something that you have to be taught. You have to be told to accept. You know? Do you have any other questions? Because you asked a very intelligent question. Oh, he's a uh, man of you. no, no. You did, you did, you did, you did as well. You did as well. But that was, I thought, that was a very, like a golden question. Any other? Any other? It's a very complex topic. Huh? Very complex. Very complex topic. Very complex topic. Yeah. Is it, I don't it, have it, many under this cold weather. weather. But I, I am freezing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. You know what it is? Because your jacket. This is for uh, Lisbon. <laughs> this is not good. Yeah, for, not for England. This yes. is. We, we will give you some Qurans and some uh, information. Yeah, please. Yeah. No, it's okay. So you're working there and, and working and here as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I work in Lisbon. Uh, nice, 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 nice. Let, let me give you back the the bag. Uh, plastic bag. I okay. Take this okay. No problem. No problem. Okay. That's okay. of course. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. fine. Yeah. Whatever is easier for you guys. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. It was well, nice to meet you guys. It was really nice. lovely to speak to you. Sweet and maybe next time I'm in Lisbon, I have to come and uh, come and check you guys out somewhere. Yes. Have a I look one of those lovely one euro lovely Lisbon coffees. Yes. And when, a, 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 a fresh nata.